good day uh, in this tutorial video we'll be looking at uh, two-step difference GMM I mean panel data estimation using two-step difference GMM difference GMM was introduced by Harry Leno and Bond in 1991 by difference in the model and through the use of instrumental variable is able to account for our uh, autocorrelation and solve the endogeneity problem inherent in a dynamic model okay dynamic model is a model that has a um, lag of dependent variable as one of its explanatory variables so what we specify this is a dynamic model okay so and Lena and bond difference the model uh, with instrumental variable okay to account for to take your problem over to correlation and endogeneity problems so this is a difference model difference mo difference in the model simply means subtracting the previous value from the current value and that's what we have here okay uh so the, this 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 uh the third equation is a reduced form of the uh, second equation okay the difference between the current and the previous value is basically a change okay change in uh the dependent variable across a variable okay so what's what are the benefit of two step over one step GMM uh, estimation techniques it is more efficient okay uh, it has a smaller asymptotic variance and uh, statistical tests based on two-step estimator are also asymptotically more powerful than those based on one-step estimator okay you can get more information on this from uh, Vada and Cosmo 2006 you can try and uh, visit it okay now there are two push estimation tests they are very important for dynamic uh, panel model estimation whether you're using difference GMM or system GMM okay that is the autocorrelation test and the instrument validates test okay uh, because of the inherent uh, characteristics of a dynamic model autocorrelation problem is uh, it's it's unavoidable so we are expected to reject no hypothesis of autocorrelation for low level autocorrelation that is AR1 okay we expect autocorrelation to be present at the lower level but at higher level we expect to have been taken care of okay so we are expected to reject to accept null hypothesis of no autocorrelation at uh, higher level autocorrelation AR2 for instrument validity we have uh, the Sagan and the Anson test okay the null hypothesis for instrument validity is that instruments are valid so we are expected to accept null hypothesis from so we expect that probability to be greater than 0 0.05 that is at 95 percent confidence interval so now we we'll go to the estimation proper okay now uh, i have two major uh codes here. we have one with lags we have one with no lags okay with low lags we have uh, uh we run the risk of uh having a uh, having what we call instrument proliferation okay uh if you look at rudman 2009 made us realize that increasing in, increase the number of instruments increased by of estimate so with no lack to guide the number of instruments in the model we run the risk of uh, having a bias estimate but regardless we run the we run the code and see the result we have so this is the code we copy the code and go to stata This is data 13. Uh, I, I have my co my data in the in state already. Okay. And uh, first of all, the first thing you do is to declare your data as a panel data. Okay. But to track your uh, your analysis. Okay. It's expected that you open a log file. Okay. Begin. The log file will help you keep records of all the analysis uh, you've been doing. So you open a log file. You give it a name. Let's be saying uh, two step. We have two step. Can always locate it uh, where we save it in the on the system. Okay. So the first thing you do is to declare your panel as uh, panel data. How do you do that? That is st set uh, cross id cross id and yeah. Okay, I'm using cross ID because that is what I use as my unique identifier for each of the cross session. Okay, click on OK. We have it. Panel variable, cross ID, strongly balanced time. Okay, it has been declared panel data. Now, uh, there's this estimator we use for uh, um, 
difference GMM and system GMM we call it estimate too. okay it's, it's, a, it's an efficient estimate too for both difference and uh, um, system GMM okay uh, it's, it's it's not an inbuilt uh, estimator so you need to install it to install it you you type ssc install stubborn 2 that is the name of the estimator ssc install stubborn 2 i'm not going to be installing it now because i have it on my system already but uh if you're going to estimate using uh stubborn 2 you need to uh to install it on your home uh so right now let's go to our analysis first of all i would like to transform my variable okay to get a reasonably modest result so i'm just going to come back to the powerpoint here and transform my my series to log form so basically i want to transform my series from a uh, uh, normal form to the log form okay so this is the, my series the name of my series invest share to generate lean invest as log of invest I'm saying that uh, you should log invest and give it this name so once I click on enter it generate them so we have generate lean invest equals log invest lean share equals log of share like that like that if you come here you will see the variables are now generated so we have the variable in the model now we can now run our codes so i'm going to be i'm going to start with the first code with no lags no lags no lags like i said in the first video stubborn 2 is the estimator this is the dependent variable the lag of dependent variable and then these are the uh, other explanatory variable okay no level equation means that I should suppress a level equation from the model do not estimate the level equation then two step this is what differentiate uh, this from one step by default uh, a difference German is one step okay but if you want two step then you have two step to the model so if you are suppressing this two step okay maybe we are estimating one step uh german and then we have this instrument the hiv this hiv are strictly exogenous variable okay why the the gmm are endogenous variable variable that are perceived to be correlated with the dependent variable okay so collapse is very important to reduce the number of instruments to moderate the number of instruments you have in the model if you click on enter Sorry for this. We have uh, so we have this result. Okay, first of all, let's start here. See, number of instruments is twenty. Number of group is ten. And uh, normally, the number of instruments should not exceed the number of group. So that makes uh, this the result for this model questionable. Although, okay. We see the from our estimation only lean share is statistically significant. Okay, the so the rest are not statistically significant. Now let's come to our first estimation test. We will realize that uh, the AR one here we are supposed to reject null hypothesis. Okay, but now we are we are accepting it. So this is a wrong model. Okay, AR two no. Only a ascent test says instrument are valuable. Sagan test says otherwise. So that means that this is a this model is questionable okay it's not completely it's not reliable okay so let's try with the lag option and see what result we have with the lag option okay uh, but this there's no clearly defined uh, rules as to to what extent we can put the lag okay but normally they say the lag should not exceed uh the number of variables you have in the model by rule of thumb okay the lag you put should not exceed the number of variables you have in the model and we don't have any scientific criteria for determining the lag of the lag you include you specify to limit the number of instruments you have in the model so uh, let's say we specify one on five okay 
we have everything the same with the first code except for the lock click on enter then we have our results let's see now the number of instruments has reduced to seven number of good ten okay so this is good our number of instruments is not expected to exceed uh, the number of groups and uh we look at it our results are fairly okay they're statistically significant and this is statistically significant at 90 percent okay so at 10 percent rather at 10 percent then let's look at our diagnostics okay it's not still looking good okay although Anson is fine saga is not and uh, uh er2 is is okay at five percent but er1 is not okay so we could try another lag let's say we decide to use uh two and four and see how it react two and four this is all we have now we realize that uh we have two and four the number of instrument is five number of group is ten and then uh realize that the uh lag of invest is statistically significant at ten percent in share at uh one percent but this is not statistically significant this is a reasonably good result okay but the post estimation test says otherwise okay our instrument are not good okay at five percent we accept null hypothesis the instrument are valid okay the we can ah uh, we can accept null hypothesis for our two that we don't have higher order autocorrelation but then we have issue with ar1 which is not supposed to be we are supposed to reject the null hypothesis for ER, but we are accepting it. So that means there's an issue. Okay. So we could try another lag. Okay. But if it persists, we have way of resolving this problem. Okay. Problem of uh, instrument invalidity and we have uh, autocorrelation issue. It's either we increase the, dynam dynamis uh, the, the dynamism of the model or we, we try and uh, check our instrument, perhaps. The instruments we have in the strictly exogenous session are not strictly endogenous, they are endogenous variable. Okay. Uh, you should watch out for the next video on how to resolve problems like this. Where we have uh, our result is showing that uh, instruments are not valid and then our AR1 and AR2 does not conform, do not conform uh, with a uh, expected result. Okay, there is a way we resolve that uh, we resolve that in data in data analysis so uh thank you for watching if you enjoyed this channel please kindly click on subscribe button a like comment and share with friends okay you watch out for the next video on uh, system gmm and consequently how to correct a uh, problem of instrument invalidity and uh, uh when a uh the ar uh, the uh, post estimation test when they do not conform with expected uh result thank you